What I'd like to talk to you about today is, and it's going to be a reoccurring theme, the Living Water Smart document that's been put out by the province. And really, I want to stress why it is that this document really creates the, the fertile soil for initiatives like that, and, um, or like that, and uh, uh, the work of the NGO groups. Because it's really through the high-level policy adoption that these types of ground-level movements uh, can, can um, take some action. So I want to talk, first of all, and give you a little bit of a, a setting. Um, it's really all about good policy. And good policy is kind of like good driver training. I'll give you a little bit of a story. When I was in university, uh, I had the opportunity to, to take advantage of this traveling road show that came through our campus. And it was uh, sponsored by the Labatt's Brewing Company. And they brought in a, it's not a good thing. They brought in a, <laughs> um, a crew of uh, uh, professional rally drivers. And uh, we spent a day at the RCMP training grounds in the middle of winter um, learning about how to drive properly. And one of the key messages, or a couple of the key messages that they brought forward was, your car goes where you look. And he said, uh, typically, if, you're, if you see an accident or somebody set a telephone pole, usually the telephone pole is right smack in the middle of it. And that's because the person that was driving was looking at the telephone pole. So really, if you want to drive safely and responsibly, what you need to do is you need to look at the horizon. You need to look out into the future, where are you trying to get to? You're not trying to drive to a telephone pole. You're trying to drive to your destination. So policy is similar in that regard, and it's important for us to know where the horizon is, where are we headed to. And what happens when you have unclear or poorly conceived policy? Well, <coughs> I, I, I could probably do a poll here, and I don't think anybody would probably uh, suggest that the Americans have done a good job of um, managing global warming. Uh, and changing the environment. In fact, they've probably been one of the laggers over the past few years. Well, why is that? I've just got a little video clip here I want to show you that might explain why. as to the Americans' action on global warming over the past few years. Um, just to clarify, just to make absolutely certain, that actually wasn't George Bush. But, uh, I know it might have been uh, easy to make that mistake. So let's talk about, uh, about our provincial policy document, and that's the Living Water Smart booklet. This is the, uh, you know, a, a really critical piece of provincial policy. and. Um, it is actually, contrary to what you just saw, an excellent long-range vision for uh, where the province is going to go with respect to water issues. Some of the statements in the document uh, talks about water being as a finite resource. Water's limits must be recognized, which means that the days of taking our unlimited supply of water for granted have passed. Another statement, we need to challenge ourselves and our businesses to think about how we can help protect our water and how the government can support these actions. Those are statements made by the Premier and they're important statements and things that we need to hold him accountable to. There's uh, other statements within the document, things like shifting our focus to stream health. Stream health will be considered first so watersheds remain healthy and we reverse the decline evident in many of our rivers and streams. A shift in thinking from taking our water for granted to designing our communities to live in harmony with water. Those are, uh, those are really big, significant shifts in how we're going to think about development. And it really goes back to uh, a lot of the objectives that Jack laid out in his presentation. Rather than thinking of land as development first and what can we save after the development is there, we really need to look at the health of our, of our watershed, the health of our community first and then find out uh, which areas uh, we can develop to maintain that health. And those statements, those key statements at a provincial level, really create the opportunity and the potential for real dramatic change at a local level, particularly here in the Comox Valley. Some of the samples of uh, policies that are in the document include things like uh, 
the government supporting communities to do watershed management planning. We've already talked about this. Talking about 50% of new, new <coughs> municipal water needs being acquired through conservation. Helping, uh, government helping, looking at new technology for water conservation. And I wanted to just talk a little bit about what that might mean if I, uh, as it hits the ground. Currently, and within the document, it, it indicates that we drink and consume less than 3% of the water that we supply to our communities. Now, you know, every community up and down the coast is, is probably not a lot different. We spend a lot of time and energy producing high quality drinking water, of which 97% of it is used for other purposes. It's kind of similar to what I've done here. I've got copies of my presentation. And uh, so this morning I opened up a box of paper, good high quality paper, made 40 copies to distribute here. And I now have 4,900 and some odd pages of paper that's been left over from the box. It's all good quality stuff. And imagine how silly it would be if I threw this in the garbage, if I used this uh, to clean up a spill on the floor, uh, if I used it for a whole bunch of meaningful or meaningless purposes. It's good quality stuff that's, that's, uh, that needs to be used appropriately. And it would be insane for me to throw this away. But that's what we're doing with our water system. And we now have statements from our, our government that they're telling us they're going to help us find better ways of managing our water. And managing our water uh, in, in ways that um, we're looking at developing new technology to help us do that. And we've already talked about this one as well. Making sure that the land and water managers um, understand what it is to have a healthy stream. And that means not only do we need to uh, perhaps retrain and educate our water managers and our land use managers, but maybe it also means that we need more information. And maybe, maybe there's a role the province can play there to help us at a local level to ensure that we have the information in our hands to make the right decisions. So, the province has done all this work on this document, they've got great policies. What do we need to do to create some action? We've already talked about policy is, uh, is a top-down process provides that big picture, gives us the horizon, but it doesn't give us a lot of details. In order for those policies to be implemented and implemented successfully, it really relies on a bottom-up approach. And that involves NGOs, it involves city staff, through the senior management at city staff, uh, up to uh, local politicians and then up to the provincial politicians. 